The aviation industry needs to train thousands of new pilots. That job starts in a flight simulator, but at some point, those pilots have to get their hands on the controls of a real aircraft. Swiss company SmartFly is trying to come up with a way to do that in a more cost-effective manner, and at the same time, burn less carbon. So we're here to find out about the new propulsion system that they've devised for this aircraft. They've also found a way to deliver additional range for those owners who might want to use this aircraft for their own private flight. We designed this aircraft for the advantage of an electric uh, propulsion system. That's the reason why we placed the propeller on the vertical tail. This is only feasible because the electric motor is about five times lighter than a conventional combustion engine. That means we have completely new ways where to produce the thrust. And the fact is that the propeller in the nose section of an aircraft has a big disadvantage. The thrust which is produced or the air masses which is accelerated just hits the biggest cross section of the fuselage. And here we have free airflow coming to the propeller and the accelerated air mass can disappear freely. That's so that the means biggest. more performance but less energy, I guess. Exactly. And uh, that's not uh, our analysis or not our measurements. That's University Stuttgart who invented that with the uh, E-Genius and measured it and they uh, calculated or measured about 25% more installation efficiency. The motor that's there, is it your design or has somebody else produced it? We have a normal MREX 348 electric motor here for the prototype. And the propeller is as well a standard propeller. And I think for the prototype, this is a very good solution. The electric motor produces 160 kilowatt for takeoff power and 120 kilowatt for max continuous power. You mentioned that this is a prototype, so does that mean you're still doing the flight testing for this aircraft? The flight testing will be in about end of this year, hopefully, but we first have to do um, sort of ground testing and uh, we need first uh, to install the high voltage batteries. The batteries are in the wing from about here to the uh, route trip. They are inside the wing and they are air cooled. We have the air inlet here in the center. Air flow goes then through the battery enclosures and disappears on the upper side of the wing. We have designed the basic uh, shape of the aircraft uh, with uh, some details and then for sure you have a lot of different professionals like aerodynamists, structural engineers and so on. We have different external engineering offices who did the calculations, analyzes and everything. And the production of the airframe was as well a different company, mostly in Switzerland. So tell us a little bit about the cockpit. The cockpit is uh, designed for a training aircraft for future airline pilots. That means we have on the left-hand part in front of the pilot the conventional uh, primary flight display, which is nothing new. But on the center console, we have everything which is thrust or power related uh, instrumentation for the hybrid electric propulsion system. So we, we want to build an aircraft which is uh, designed for airline pilot training. That means we have a, a control stick and then the thrust lever. And the thrust lever have a, has a very nice feature. We have a integrated motor here, so it can move back and forward. The idea is, for instance, if you want to make a reduced thrust takeoff, you can give the figures like the uh, performance figures and then uh, the thrust lever moves automatically to that takeoff um, power value. This thrust lever goes only to the electric propulsion system. Here we have a panel uh, for the range extender and this is exactly the same manipulations as for an APU in an airliner. So you have only the start switch the stop switch and the generator. And the whole control of this uh, range extender is done by a computer. 
So Rolf, a few times you have referred to the range extender. What do we mean by that? A range extender is a combustion engine connected to a generator. And this produces electric energy. But the amount of electric energy, the power is only about 60 kilowatt. This is not sufficient for the takeoff. This is only sufficient for horizontal cruise flight. But the combustion engine and the generator, they run in the optimum range, in the optimum performance range. They can be um, run by SAF, by sustainable aviation fuel, or even by hydrogen. And the beauty on this concept is that we can replace this whole range extender with batteries. So that means every pilot should be able to connect either batteries for shorter flights or the range extender for flights up to four hours. For example, a flight school, they have then different nose modules, different energy modules, either two batteries. One is always on the aircraft flying, the other one is on ground charging or a range extender for longer training flights. So that's really a nice thing, which is not feasible when you have a conventional con uh, configuration. And if we want to use hydrogen, we could as well install here a fuel cell. But this is then not swappable. This is then a fixed installation. So Rolf, just one more time, explain to me, what do you see as the main demand for this aircraft? How, how will you sell it? As you know, the uh, commercial air traffic uh, will increase, will grow within the next 20 years, will almost double. That needs a lot of new pilots. So commercial pilot training, that's the big market and uh, that's the best aircraft for that purpose. And I think that's really a big market besides the replacement of the existing old fashioned training uh, aircraft for general aviation. Will it be less expensive to train people in this aircraft? Absolutely. We calculated about 50% less direct operating costs because of less energy cost and less maintenance cost. Despite the uh, replacement of the batteries after about 2000 uh, hours, that's everything calculated, but with the lower energy consumption and lower maintenance cost, we can uh, calculate 50% less direct operating costs.